now I'm going to go to Caroline, who's um, who's joining us to talk about CCCM in anticipatory action. Um, Caroline, I think a lot of people here also know you, but maybe not so much in your new role. So I'm going to let you introduce yourself and, and take it away. Thanks. Cool, we can see your screen, thank you. Great, thank you. Yes, we're a GChat platform sort of organization over here, but nice to see everybody. And it's been really interesting listening to the different presentations. My name is Caroline Logan. I am the uh, current program coordinator with USA BHA's Yemen team I'm based in Amman, um, but I am a former CCCM practitioner. So I'm really excited to um, be talking to you today and just kind of overview some of the work that our partners are doing in Yemen um, and some of the opportunities for future sort of CCM collaboration around uh, disaster preparedness. Um, I put my email there if anybody wants any follow-up later on. There you go. So um, overall, uh, USAID supports um, partners in every governorate of Yemen, uh, in almost every sector. Uh, it's a very large portfolio. Last year, uh, we committed over a billion dollars for FY22 uh, to aid. This year, it's around 528 million. Um, as you can see, that is a decrease. So it is interesting um, today to talk about how we can look at cost effectiveness and improving the sort of efficiency of our responses using the capacities that CCCM has already. Um, overall in Yemen, our goal is life-saving support. So um, I just wanna make sure you guys can see this, sorry. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of technical difficulty there. That's all right. Do you need a hand on anything? Um, one second. Just give me a second, sorry. No problem. No rush. Sorry, can you see that now? Nope. I am not. We could see your screen before. Okay. And now I think, there yes, you know. now we can. Yeah. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, yes. Yeah, so, again, what BHA's uh, priority is for Yemen are these emergency life saving activities. Uh, there's a real focus on reducing the risk of famine and communicable diseases, but also addressing the impacts from conflict related uh, displacement, as well as things like natural disasters and flooding. Um, so these two maps kind of show where our uh, interests and our priorities converge, which is looking at those uh, areas and those communities most at risk from displacement and most impacted by displacement. Um, as well as those that are uh, experiencing the highest amounts of food insecurity. Um, and we do fund several CCM partners across Yemen, uh, and we definitely see the value that CCCM has brought in Yemen and the site management support uh, as it's done there in, in really kind of pushing forward multi-sectoral response for IDP sites um, and bringing in this sort of minimum service package uh, in, I think it's over 2,600 sites across the country, but I'm sure my CCM cluster colleagues and CCM partners would have that exact figure. Um, so today I'm going to just briefly talk about this anticipatory action concept. Um, it's not necessarily that new of an idea, but it is something that was presented and kind of prioritized um, by OCHA to the HCT for Yemen in uh, January of this year. Um, and the general idea is that we will um, put a little bit more effort in in the beginning uh, before a disaster, and then that will theoretically um, reduce the impact on communities the same way that disaster preparedness traditionally does, um, but pre-positioning funding, pre-positioning supplies, starting to do activities, 
that we know are going to be required before a disaster happens um, will allow us to also um, reduce the time that it takes us to respond, reduce those impacts. Um, so instead of having the kind of traditional model where you um, have your assessment and then response and then financing, you're going to have all of these things sort of prearranged before. Um, right now in Yemen, there is a pilot project through YHF. Uh, it's going through a series of steps and sort of collaborative process. Uh, it has been very much fed into, and I won't say led, but um, definitely the CCM cluster and CCM partners um, have done a lot of the development work on this, um, especially in this step one, which is the definition of the risks. Um, that's understanding where we're going to see flooding and other natural disasters, um, then establishment of a crisis timeline and trying to see again where we can start before day zero, where we can start prepositioning, doing preparedness activities, but also um, doing additional uh, mitigation measures. Mm, then uh, understanding what the trigger mechanisms are and how those are going to be communicated to uh, the population, developing those core set of activities, agreeing on funding and commitment, and then design of learning components. Um, for 2023, and I stole this from the CCCM cluster presentation, so thank you, Gabriel and Walid, if they are on this call. Um, but there are three key parts that CCCM is involved in throughout the, the anticipatory action process, and that's on the preparedness side. So it's really the CCCM data and a lot of that's um, produced with the help of REACH uh, that's doing flood risk analysis um, and the analysis of which IDP sites are most at risk. Um, there's CCCM mitigation interventions that are being done at site level. Then the anticipatory action part of this is led through OCHA um, and being piloted through a YHF allocation, but that's truly multi-sectoral and that's funding partners to do a set of kind of core multi-sectoral activities, including WASH, NFI, shelter reinforcement kits, um, site planning, um, community action plans, uh, some awareness activities, MRE uh, awareness and all of that as this sort of early action. Um, and then CCCM throughout this is working on supporting with planning figures and identifying those prioritized locations. And then also should that disaster occur, um, CCCM is providing rapid information and then doing the sort of uh, post-disaster response, maintenance and repair. This is some great uh, flood hazard mapping that the CCM cluster and REACH had done that looks at site level mapping. Um, in their assessment, they looked at, I think, 25% of sites being assessed as being at high risk of floods. Um, so that's pretty substantial. And throughout, I think there's 600,000 uh, individuals that are encompassed in those sites that are at high risk. Um, and then the CCM cluster continues to work uh, with partners and site management actors on identifying certain additional criteria that would allow um, the anticipatory action to prioritize specific sites um, based on site access, site population size, and a number of other criteria. And then they did some good flood risk mapping per hub, which is sort of a governorate area-based uh, approach that, that is um, being implemented in, in Yemen right now and seeing where um, to prioritize again. Um, they did some great mapping, looking at CCCM mitigation activities. Um, and these are too small for you to read, I'm sure, but um, this set of activities are things that are done both in the preparedness phase or that are theoretically done before the disaster happens. Um, and doing this mapping really helped to also see what was already being done, where there's gaps. Some of these things are, as we know in CCCM, not entirely under the control of your site management agency or not entirely within the budget of your site management activities. So relies on you know, mobilizing other partners to, for instance, pre-stock NFIs, uh, based on the data and prioritization of uh, CCCM partners. And then what I really see personally, and again, these are not the, um, the opinions of 
the US government per se, or you know, any commitment of funds or anything, but in terms of where I really see the CCCM's value add, um, and this is preaching to the choir, of course, um, but is that the CCCM and site management actors are obviously there on the ground. You've got the proximity and the presence to these affected communities. Um, you have the sort of objectivity um, from being on the ground and, and having that familiarity with communities to understand who is most at risk and which are priorities and be able to make provide that advice to the larger sector. Um, then among that, you also have the sort of trust and, and ultimately the accountability um, since the site management staff are oftentimes the, the ones that IDPs and, and people in these sites are seeing most frequently. So uh, in some ways, site management actors have the most motivation to get this right. Um, and then taking those sort of four core activities of, of any site management team, and I applaud, I think Tom Stork and Jennifer and the others who worked on the CCM uh, minimum standards guidance that came out, that's fantastic. But looking at, at all of the activities under there and how well they fit into this uh, anticipatory approach um, and anticipatory action uh, approach. So first, you know, on the com community participation level, you have site management uh, teams that are working with communities to develop community action plans. Um, which similar to uh, what you might have to with your own family to decide what to do in a fire emergency, doing those sort of plannings at uh, the community level and the site level with your committees, forming emergency committees where relevant or if they're not already formed or sort of re-upping re the training for those emergency committees. Um, making sure that those include representative groups. And we had some great presentations earlier today on disability inclusion, um, on child protection. So making sure that the messages that are being sent out are appropriate for all these different groups like children, making sure that those with disabilities are able to also flee in the event of a disaster. Um, and there is some forethought being put into that at the community level. Um, info sharing and designing the sort of soft components of early warning. Um, maybe that's a calling tree, maybe that's, um, you know, some sort of alert mechanism in the camp, but also awareness campaigns, um, doing things like mine risk education prior to a flood would be very helpful. Um, then doing information management, of course, core CCCM activity, but uh, SMS actors have that site population information there already, which can be used for prioritization, but also used for accounting and understanding um, the impacts after the flood, um, using the site profiling to inform your risk assessments. Uh, and then I, I think we saw on one of these previous slides, one of the big unmet needs at this point in the mitigation activities for our partners is the uh, contingency response stocks of things like NFIs, toolkits, and tarplins. Um, for the flood response. Um, and so uh, using that site profiling to then work with those uh, SNFI and other partners is really important. Um, in terms of site coordination, you have your multi-sector support on preparedness actions. So we saw that those have huge needs for WASH, uh, for instance, um, protecting water sources already, doing the sledging, SNFI, doing the... Um, uh, shelter reinforcement kits and things like that, protection, there's a lot of HLP uh, equities in this as well. Um, of course, the referral mechanisms, and we had a great presentation on Zite, I'll go a little bit quicker. Um, and then, of course, the, the sort of hard components of care and maintenance that can be really critical in assessing um, what's needed for disaster preparedness and what's needed in anticipatory action. Um, and then using those uh, CCCM site maintenance budgets to do what you can in that uh, flood risk mitigation works like Gabby on Walls and others. Many CCCM partners or site management partners have sort of pre set up uh, cash for work lists. So having those people on standby to respond either before or after. Um, and then any sort of early warning hardware systems are important. And then where I see there's big opportunities for the CCM partners in Yemen when looking at this response is that flooding in some ways is a very predictable thing that happens almost every year in Yemen. It has been getting worse. There are more and more people that are being displaced by it. 
which is exacerbated by conflict, exacerbated by there being informal self settlements and, and shelters that are substandard. But regardless, this is something that happens every year and has been happening for most of the history of Yemen. So it is something we can predict and it's also relatively non-political. So it's um, an activity that we can really use to uh, consolidate and to, to practice in some ways how we do really truly community-led response. So these community action plans can take on some of the best practice from you know, Southeast Asia and other parts of the world that have a lot of disasters and are really doing the community-led disaster um, response planning. So really trying to take this opportunity to work through, give yourself time or the partners hopefully giving themselves time. If the floods are gonna happen in June, let's start in January talking with that community and developing that plan and really making it community led. Um, and then the other opportunities, measuring impact. Uh, this would be something I don't need to reiterate that as a donor, we would love to see cost efficiency. Um, Given the sort of global humanitarian funding landscape, it's really important for partners to be able to get some key data points that show that if we can act early, this is going to be the impact. You're going to have X, Y, Z or X amount of families not displaced, or you're going to be able to give a shelter reinforcement kit instead of having to replace an entire shelter, but really using this pilot as a way to collect that information. Um, and measure the effectiveness of the approach is really important. One of the other impacts we'd really like to measure is sort of the reduction of time between the disaster and the actual response, because we'll see in some cases you have a sort of RM response that can somehow reach people in 72 hours after displacement or after an event, but then, you know, a shelter or other response that takes much longer. So trying to figure out how we can reduce those response times so that the assistance that's being given is really relevant and timely. Um, improving referral speed and response time, as I said, um, is really one of those keys to make sure that the uh, assistance remains relevant um, and that we really are sort of accountable from when we, especially as CCCM actors, are providing that referral and then actually um, closing it out. And then of course, protection mainstreaming. Um, there was a very, very good evaluation, uh, the IHA, IAHE evaluation um, that took place in Yemen that really underlined how protection mainstreaming needs more, more prioritization for Yemen, that it really hasn't been central. And I, and I think, again, I'm preaching to the choir, but CCCM actors should be sort of first in line and upfront to say, we're here to do protection mainstreaming as well. This is such a core part of so many of our activities. There's so many synergies between protection and CCCM and site management actors, especially on the ground are so well-placed to be kind of like pursuing this protection mainstreaming and centrality of protection agenda and really operationalizing it. So making sure that CCCM partners in this anticipatory action approach are really getting out in front of that and prioritizing and centralizing protection. And then of course, just linking um, a lot of issues on HLP, I won't even start going into because they're very complicated in Yemen as well, but making sure that the CCCM actors and the protection actors are, are really linked up on things like planned relocations in the case that you have shelters or settlements that are impacted by disasters or, or need to be relocated prior to a disaster to avoid that harm. So sorry I went over a little bit, but I had some technical difficulties and I really appreciate it and happy to answer any questions offline at some point as well. Over. Perfect, thank you so much, Caroline. And, and I think of course, it's always great to um, have people in on the donor side who also have really good and strong and operational understanding of CCCM. I hope that, you know, with you there, it's, be, it's not going to be too long before we have a CCCM focal point in um, BHA HQ um, and that we stop getting con being confused with what shelter is. Um, and I'm also glad to see that uh, the cluster in Yemen have also been producing great products. Um, and thank you, Gabriel, also for, for sharing the report on that too. Um, I think there was, we really appreciate um, a lot of the, the comment and, and the, the push that you're, you're sharing with us there. Um, 
definitely interesting to think how we're going to move from you know like participation focus to um, kind of community leadership um, focus in the work that we do. Um, 